our studio guest tonight is Peter Cook, who today was elected Footballer of the Year 1970. Many, many congratulations, Peter. Uh, thank you, Jimmy. Would you mind using camera two, because this is my bad profile, and I'd rather it's on the... If you like the barnet, actually, it's done by Luigi of Neeson. It's quite nice, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it's looking very nice. Actually. Thank you. A lot of people have said that this competition was rigged. What do you say about that? Old Jimmy, you know, throughout the world, there will always be knockers. <laughs> there will always be knockers, and I hope there always will be. <laughs> and the fact that uh, my mother, my father, two brothers and three sisters are on the panel, I think had no influence on the result at all. We now let's look back at those last exciting moments of that competition, Peter. Mm. I could watch it all night. Footballer of the Year 1970, Peter Cook of Real Interneesden. Well, as you can imagine, Jimmy, I was, I was, I was knocked out. Knocked out. Yes, yes, I can see that. Completely knocked out. Here yes. comes now. Yeah. Yeah. Did you feel that when he placed the crown on your head? Yeah, he really bangs the crown on your head, does Mel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, he gave me a right bang on the lips there. I'll say that for him, yeah, Jimmy. I, I could see you enjoyed it, but what I'm really interested in, you're a very wealthy sportsman already. Yeah, Do you yeah, believe that yeah, footballers yeah. should advertise commercial products? Well, uh, let's put it this way, Jimmy. Um, I would only advertise a product I really believe in. And I really believe in that deodorant. I mean, there is nothing puffy about a stick deodorant. <laughs> nothing puffy at all. I carry it on and off the field, especially on the field, because when the ref's got his back turned, you can bang it in the goalkeeper's eye. <laughs> Do you approve of that kind of gamesmanship? Well, let's face it, Jimmy, uh, football is a man's game. You've played it, it's a man's game, and uh, you go to win. Uh, there are certain things that interneased them, which we'd never do. Uh, for example, we'd never use tactical nuclear weapons. Uh, we'd never use CS gas, except perhaps in the Fairs Cup. What is your feeling about uh, late tackles? Well, my feeling about late tackles, Jimmy, is, you know, on a slippery surface with a 50-50 situation, you can't help it sometimes. But what I do disapprove of very strongly is the very, very, very late tackle. Like, for example, when Ron Nee went in over the top four hours after the game <laughs> in the pub when we were having a drink. Now, I think he deserved to be suspended. And was he suspended after that? Yeah, uh, me and the lads hung him up from one of the rafters for two hours. <laughs> Interneesden have shown tremendous improvement this yeah, season. Yeah, really yeah, remarkable. Yeah, 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 what do you yeah, put yeah, that yeah. down to? Well, basically, we, we, we have changed our tactics, you see. Uh, last season, we used to play a 3-4-3 formation, and now we're playing a 4-3-3 formation. What does that mean in layman's terms? I've got no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's what the manager tells us. No, basically, we are into Neesden. Uh, we have uh, two strikers, one sweeper, a midfield worker and six hooligans. <laughs> Peter, you're a very unobtrusive player. You know, sometimes I think the fans yeah. don't really appreciate the running off the ball that you do. Yeah, I, and I, I'm very unobtrusive. I do run off the ball. Some people, including my mother, have said I'm 20 years ahead of my time. Uh, the fact is, I like running off the ball, I like running off the pitch, I like running down the pub, and I like having a drink. But a lot of people don't notice these little subtle touches. <laughs> well, we can look at some of those lovely subtle touches now in slow motion. Yeah. There you are, just about to emerge onto the field of play. And you see you're resisting tackles there. Yeah. Uh, two or three nasty tackles there, I can see. But it's this movement that comes next. It's one of the best movements of the hip that I think I've ever seen. There it is. A sideways move of the hip. And watch the elevation there as you jump up in the air, left foot to right, and now ghost along there on a possible overlap. Yeah, and I then went on to penetrate one of the tightest defences in the North of London. Peter, what, what worries me, really, with these uh, off-the-field activities? I mean, don't you find they interfere with your game a little bit? Yeah, well, look, if you're, you know, going to play football, you've got to keep yourself in training, haven't you? I mean, you can't go out every night of the week dancing and drinking and chatting up the birds and doing all that kind of stuff and then turn up on Saturday and play 90 minutes of football. So if I've spent a week dancing and drinking and chatting up the birds and uh, doing all that, I don't turn up Saturday. <laughs> it wouldn't be fair to me, it wouldn't be fair to the boys, it wouldn't be fair to the manager, it wouldn't be fair to the girls. <laughs> I'm sure that's highly commendable. One final question I'd like to put to you. What would you do, really, to bring the crowds back if there was one thing that you could do in football? 
Oh, basically, Jimmy, uh, the crowds come to see goals. You know, that's what they want to see, goals. I am a goal grabber. Uh, goal grabber. <laughs> and a uh, goal poacher, call it what you like. And they want to see goals. And uh, these days, with tightly knit defences, scientifically worked out, um, we're very tight at the back, aren't we? I mean, you're very tight at the back, I've noticed that. <laughs> Everybody's very tight at the back. And if you're going to poke it in, it's very hard. <laughs> now, in my view, the only way you can get more goals is make the goal a bit larger. Enlarge the goal posts and put the crossbar up a bit higher. That's the only way you can do it. And what size would you suggest for the goals? Size of the goals? Well, I'd leave this to the uh, impartial committee, you know, Sir Alf Ramsey, the Queen Mother and that sort of thing. Uh, I'd say round about the size of Malcolm Allison's mouth. <laughs>